you have a long history in the hunting industry, obviously, which most people know about, but I, I want to, and I literally don't know, I want to learn a little bit more about you because you were, you've been a, you've been successful, um, even before you're able to do this full time. And I think there's a lot of people out there, especially listeners and followers that I have that are always wondering, like, how do these guys have these lives? Like Corey Jacobson, he's just elk hunting all over the place. And like people send him free gear and like, God, it must be nice. Right. But you owned a, was it a construction company or like a, tell yep. us a little bit about that. Yeah, actually, uh, I got my college degree in mechanical engineering and worked for 10 years as an engineer uh, in the semiconductor industry. No way, which we need more of now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and the funny thing was, I am the furthest person from, at least then, I'm, I'm a little better now from a technology standpoint, but then I worked for five years in the semiconductor industry before I bought my first computer. Uh, I had no interest in computers. I had no interest in semiconductor industry. It was just a good job with good benefits and good time off and good pay. And I thought, that's what I want to do. And, and honestly, that's why I wanted to be an engineer. I had a good friend from Tennessee that was an engineer and he came out hunting every fall. And he's like, oh, I get all this time off. I make good money. I'm single, all these things. And I thought, that's what I want. And after 10 years of doing it, I think the last three years were just dreadful. I just, I, I hated going to work. I would wake up almost nauseous in the morning knowing I had to drive to work. I would stare at the clock all day waiting till five o'clock so I could leave. Uh, I had no passion for it. I had no interest for it. And I realized that no matter how hard I worked, I was making somebody else money. And so that led me to start looking into other opportunities. And I didn't have a whole lot of other experience in, in anything, but my wife and I had built a home and we had a horrible experience with the home builder. And, you know, just as far as scheduling, he was just very inconsistent, very unreliable, uh, made up stories all the time about what was going on. And I made a comment at one point that if this clown can build houses, anybody can. Hmm. And so when it came time to, to think about something else, I thought, well, I'm going to try it. So I got a, a construction loan from a good friend of mine and uh, built a spec house. And this was in 2000, gosh, I don't know, five, six, somewhere in there. And the spec home sold about two or three weeks after it was done. And from that, another person came and wanted me to build a house for him. And so I built that one spec house and for the next four years, I think, uh, every home that I built was pre-sold. And then 2008, 2009 came along. Mm. And uh, I, you know, just I, I've been so incredibly blessed with everything I've done. But, you know, my wife at the time, uh, not my wife at the time, my wife now <laughs> at the time, <laughs> she, uh, you know, she gave me the, the freedom to leave my job in the semiconductor industry and take a huge risk. So, in she, owning she our had business. A, so you guys had dual income? Uh, we did not. No, she, uh, she was staying at home. We had, Oh, three, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. We had three kiddos, uh, under gosh, age four. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been and she, through that rat race before. Yeah, myself. that's a, that's a scary time in itself. <laughs> but to leave, you know, insurance and guaranteed mm -hmm. checks and all of that, to go do something that there was no guarantee, you know, she she's the one that said, if you feel good about it, let's do it. Mm -hmm.